You didn't have to be born into a family. You didn't have to be of the tribe of Levi. In fact, Jesus, the lineage of Jesus was traced back to which tribe? The tribe of Judah. The tribe of Judah was that they were never supposed to be priests at all. But the Melchizedek priesthood is different because you don't have to be born into the right tribe. You don't have to be born into the right family. It's a personal priesthood. And lastly, number four, the Melchizedek priesthood is eternal. Hebrews 7, chapter 3. Without father or mother, without genealogy, without beginning of days or end of life, resembling the Son of God, he, meaning Melchizedek, remains a priest forever. So the priesthood of Melchizedek, like the priesthood of Jesus, Jesus died once for all mankind and for all sin, for all eternity. Amen? Jesus doesn't have to repeat his death every year on the Day of Atonement. There was one sacrifice by the high priest in that order of Melchizedek. So Melchizedek was what is called a type of Jesus. Some scholars actually believe that Melchizedek was God visiting the earth. I personally believe, and I think it's much, we won't get into it, but I, for a lot of reasons, it's much more clear and biblical that Melchizedek was a type of Jesus that we're seeing. And here's the thing I really want to point out about all of that stuff I just shared, is Melchizedek, the order of Melchizedek, is not about a priesthood like the Levitic priesthood that requires sacrifices over and over and requires perfection in your lineage and requires you to be a certain age and has all these conditions. The Melchizedek priesthood is one that combines kingly authority with priestly duty. Did you get that? I want to say it again. The Melchizedek order combines kingly authority with priestly duty and that's the order that you and I and the church of Jesus Christ in this hour has been bought, uh, brought into. Say amen if you're with me. Kingly authority. So what in the world, what does all this mean? I love to make it practical. Let's get into the practical. What does that actually mean? That means, number one, your authority in the kingly realm, first of all, it means that you are of royal lineage and kingly authority. That means that you are not just, again, some believer in a Christian faith and you subscribe to a bunch of values. You have kingly authority and your authority comes through the order of Melchizedek, through that priesthood, through Jesus and is given to you. Jesus, the king of the nations, has given us the authority to rule with him. Do you understand what that means? That doesn't just mean that we're some little mini followers of Jesus and he has all the authority and someday maybe we'll get lucky enough to follow him. No, that means you and I have authority in the earth as kings to rule and reign and take dominion over the earth. You've got to understand that. That was part of who Melchizedek was. He wasn't just a priest. He was a king. He was a ruler. He had authority in the realm of the earth. This means, secondly, the job of the priest reconciling heaven to earth applies through our kingship, through our royalty, through our authority that applies to every, every sphere of life that we're in and every place in the earth that we walk. What does that mean? Getting real practical. That means if we're walking as kings and priests, we have authority in the school systems to say this isn't lining up with what's going on with heaven. You've got to hear me now. Tune in and listen, because now we're going to make it practical. I am so sick of cancel culture in the church, because cancel culture in the church is the opposite of walking in royal priesthood. Royal priesthood says, I have authority as a king on the earth. I have authority in the natural. I have authority in that school system. And I have authority as a priest to bring heaven to earth in that school system. So I'm not going to cancel it. What I'm going to do is step into my priestly authority and anointing and see change come to the school system. Come on, say amen if you're with me. That applies to everything. That applies to government. That applies to Fortune 500 companies. That applies to the marketplace. That applies to, are you ready? Say, I'm ready. 
That applies to your home. Where are the men here? I'm going to come for you for a second. Is that all right? <laughs> she said, sure, go for it. Men, you are the priest of your homes. I am the priest of my home. There is an attack. There is an attack against fathers in this generation. And don't think for a second that it's not linked to the season we're in in this nation. Because if the enemy can take out not just men, but if the enemy can take out your priesthood over your home, then your wife, your kids, everyone else under that priesthood is, is, is up for grabs. The protective covering of the priesthood in the home. So what does that mean, men? What are you letting... I'm coming for the men. Hallelujah. What are you letting into your home? What am I letting into my home? Do you, know I ha, do you know how aware you have to be as a father of young children right now in this day? I can't, we had the Disney Channel on, or not the Disney Channel, but Disney Plus, which I don't even know why we have, and we're probably going to get rid of it now after this, but I was just working in the house, the kids were watching it, and suddenly I hear these chants coming from this cartoon and, you know, we're going to talk about this, too, because I don't know one champ from another. I never was in the occult or witchcraft or any of that. But something in my spirit, man, oh, when I heard that, I just went, Shh, what is that? And I, my kids know when I turn and say, what are you watching? It's never a good thing. But I did that, man. I turned and I said, what is that? And they told me whatever it was. I said, turn it off right now, and I don't ever want to see you watching that again. And they, my kids know me, and I was like, Zoop put the remote down, and then they're coloring to show me that they're, you know. But that's priesthood. That, who knows what that stuff was coming in? Priest of your home, but I know I have authority in my home. Why? I, I'm, not, I'm not a harsh taskmaster. I love my kids. I'm a, a good, loving father, but I know the authority that I have. Now, I'm talking about my kids, but you know where that starts? That starts with what I watch with my own eyes in my own house. It's easy to tell them, turn off the Disney Channel, that's bad, and then sit down when I'm tired and worn out after a day and just start flipping through and start letting stuff right back into our living room. And also, don't think for a second that demonic activity is not attached to that stuff. We have to have eyes to see in this day. And that's why it comes back to priesthood. Say priesthood. You are a royal priesthood. I'm a royal priesthood. See, priesthood isn't just for Sunday mornings and Wednesday nights. You don't put on the priesthood cap of authority when you come to Camp Kings because you know it's a place where you can wave flags and pray in the spirit and, oh, I'm going to be a priest tonight, and then take it off and live in Babylon for the other four days until Sunday. Amen? As the church goes, so goes the nation. And it's easy to say that phrase and say, well, as the church goes, there's, there's this concept of the ecclesia out there, the big church, and as the church goes, no, the church is you and the church is me. Jesus said the kingdom of God is among you. As you and I go, see, what I'm watching on TV, what I'm letting into my eye gate affects the outcome of the nation. It just does. Are you still with me? Amen. Now I want to talk about a couple things. I want to give us four. I like giving practical, practical things. But I want to talk now about what affects our priesthood in our individual lives. Can we do that? Four things I want to give you. Because this is where the rubber hits the road. It's so easy to look at the church out there and say, if the church would just become a priesthood, we'd be all right. And not look at what's going on in here as our personal royal priesthood. Say amen. Number one, these are four things that affect your personal priesthood, therefore affecting the priesthood of the church at large because we are the church. Number one, your wholeness and your freedom in the realm of your soul. It's quiet in here. Are you with me? Your wholeness and your freedom. First Thessalonians says, may your, whole, uh, may your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless at the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. We are clearly made up of spirit, soul, and body. Yes? 
I'll say it like this because I'm learning the lingo of King of Kings. Some of us need to go over to the blue house. Some of you are laughing. I learned that last week. Turn to someone and say, do you need to go over to the blue house? <laughs> For those watching and you don't know, the blue house is where the inner healing and deliverance happens at King of Kings. And some of us need to go over to the blue house because it affects your priesthood. I had, many years ago, I had a serious uh, theology that was anti-deliverance for believers until I got delivered. <laughs> Until I went through deliverance, true story. And then my theology changed in about two minutes. Listen, we've done a bad job as the church of dealing with people's soul realms. We've told them you need to pray more, you need to worship more, you need to sin less, you need to try this, you need to try that, do that. But I'm telling you, we are theologically, First Thessalonians, we are spirit, soul, and body. And the Lord wants to bring freedom in the realm of the soul to his church so that we can step into a priesthood that's not skewed by the pain and the trauma from the past. A priesthood that's not tainted by legal access that we've given to demons. Because you, can be, you can't be possessed as a spirit-filled believer, but you can give legal access to areas and you can be tormented and your priesthood is affected by that. Whoever is, I think it's 1 Corinthians 8, so whoever is united with the Lord is one with him in what? In spirit. We need to be one with the Lord in spirit and also healed in the soul. Our. Are you with me tonight? That's number one. Say, go to the blue house if you need to. Number two, the second thing that affects our priesthood is consecration. By the way, these are all some of our core messages at the altar. Most of the pe people at the altar are under 35. There's a lot of musicians and worship leaders. And they, we, have, we have a discipleship training like ministry school we only take 12 at a time, and we pray about who we're supposed to have, and we do it in our house. And they think they're coming to a worship and intercession school because they're all musicians. And they are, but we don't get to music training until week, like, 30 out of 36. I'm not kidding at all. They're like, when are we going to learn about music? Oh, after you get delivered and healed and we talk about holiness... Then we'll talk about music. But this one, number two, consecration. We do not talk about holiness in the church anymore. And we have put on this seeker-sensitive, can I go there? For some reason, we have been fed, we have bought into the lie that it's our duty to attract everyone into the four walls and give them baby's milk for 20 years. Or we might offend them and they might leave the church. What this generation needs is to understand that there's a heaven and a hell. 